One group is questioning what role did surface mining play in July's flood? And with nowhere to take their damaged items, many folks turned to dump sites after the flood, but now the community is dealing with another issue, illegal dumping sites. And things are nice and mild right now, but nice and mild this time of year often leads to rain chances. We're breaking those down coming up as Mountain News at 6 starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. A Kentucky environmental group is asking the federal government to investigate the role strip mines may have played in July's flood. Included in their letter was data highlighting the proximity of 35 flood-related deaths to nearby strip mines. WYMT's Keaton Hall has more. Officials with the group Kentuckians for the Commonwealth believe surface mining played a role in the amount of deaths related to July's flood. Now they've pinned a letter to the federal government asking for an investigation. We feel that there's a a link between the flooding and the state of surface mining in our state. Uh, we feel like there's been some breakdowns in the regulatory process. The group says the Kentucky Department of Mine Reclamation and Enforcement has not appropriately enforced laws meant to protect Kentuckians from the environmental effects of coal mining. We're now talking about a massive cumulative effect of all those decades of mining. And it's going to take, I think, a, 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 a federal effort to understand what the what has happened. KFTC officials are also accusing the department of not adequately investigating complaints from eastern Kentuckians after the flood. In Perry County, Keaton Hall, WYMT Mountain News. In a statement, the state defended its enforcement of mining regulations. State officials say they would welcome any federal investigation into surface mining's contribution to the flooding. The Bell County Volunteer Fire Department posted on Facebook a caller reported hearing an explosion shortly after 5 a.m. Monday around Smith Cemetery on Highway 190. Firefighters found a car on top of a gravel road near the cemetery was on fire. They said the reported explosion could have been a tire or another object that exploded from heat and pressure. Crews could not get a truck up to where the car was, so they used hand extinguishers to put out the fire. The Bell County Sheriff's Department is investigating. One person is dead after a house fire in southwest Virginia. It happened early Friday morning in the 400 block of Callahan Avenue in Appalachia. When crews from the Appalachia Fire Department and the Big Stone Gap Fire Department arrived, they found the fire had engulfed the front of the home. Firefighters started trying to beat back the flames while a search team went into the home. One person was found inside and brought out. Officials say they were not able to revive them. Following last year's flood, many Eastern Kentuckians are seeking help from various organizations for debris removal. But without this help, some might turn to illegal dumping, which is an issue several Eastern Kentuckians are seeing firsthand. WYMT's Alyssa Williams spoke with a few Eastern Kentucky leaders to learn more about what the general public can do to help. Various Knott County officials are working to help those impacted by the flood through private property debris removal. But Knott County Judge Executive Jeff Dobson says more than 100 people have registered without anyone actually receiving help. Here we're nearly seven months in and a lot of folks are still having to deal with this. And it's, it's a really unfortunate. Dobson says this delay in help could cause people to take matters into their own hands. With this debris and things that's not being removed, folks are starting to take it on to their self to, to have to move it. And uh, now that there's no sites available for to, to take that to other than taking to the transfer station, uh, you, which you have to pay for, you know, it's, uh, it's very sad and unfortunate that a lot of folks are, are uh, turning to uh, illegal dumping. This is an issue Bobby Brown with the Perry County Conservation District knows all too well. Brown says the people of Perry County are beginning to illegally dump trash and debris more and more. We are operating at maximum capacity to haul this stuff out of here and, and dispose of it. 
Brown says the amount of illegal dumping can have a significant impact on local tourism, negatively impacting an area that's already hurting. We're losing a tremendous uh, money making opportunity in this county just in tourism. Let people love to come to the mountains. And this is what they're going to see? How many of them you think is going to come back? Brown says this issue ends with us. If you see someone illegally dumping, report them or help to properly dispose of the items. Alyssa Williams, WYMT Mountain News. If you need help with debris removal or need to know how you can properly dispose of trash or debris, you can visit our website at WYMT.com. Well, cool and quiet, the name of the game, as we head through the rest of our Monday evening. We're at 59 now in Hazard. As the sun sets behind our camera here at the studios of WYMT, a look from the Mountain Parkway at Slade. You can see the oranges of a nice sunset there, upper 50s at the current time. We'll continue to see temperatures in the low 60s in many spots, or these were the highs today, actually. Low 60s in many locations, starting to see those numbers come down a little bit now. Upper 50s in many spots as we continue to see things calm down tonight. Satellite and radar, not much going on across the entire state, so we'll continue to see quiet conditions as we head through tonight. Mostly clear in the 30s for those overnight lows tonight. In just a few minutes, though, I'll have the details on when we see a return to some mm, stormier weather. Those details in a few minutes. Steve. Evan, thank you. We, of course, saw mild temperatures last week, and as Evan's been talking about, more warmer weather is on the way. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet is taking advantage of it to catch up on road repairs. WYMT's Dakota Makris explains. Kentucky Transportation Cabinet District 10 crews were busy repairing potholes on Kentucky 1110 Monday morning. Weather is always a factor in how we approach our uh, construction and, and maintenance. So. Obviously, in the winter, uh, a lot of our efforts go into snow and ice removal. District 10 has not had to deal with a lot of ice or snow so far this winter. Around average rainfall and warmer temperatures are the perfect recipe for road repairs. Even if you don't have snow in the wintertime, you have potholes because of water seeping into cracks in the roadway and the freeze-thaw cycle and then the impact of uh, traffic on the pavement. Not only repairing potholes, but working on ditches to keep water flowing, along with brush and tree removal to increase visibility. But with that, Elkin says drivers should stay alert to working crews. If you've stood out uh, near a work zone, you know how harrowing it can be sometimes. So that's what we're trying to do is just get people to uh, slow down a little bit and pay attention and give our, our workers some room, give them a break. Working to keep you and our roads safe. In Breathitt County, Dakota Makeris, WYMT Mountain News. If you would like to report a pothole, you can call 1-800-PATCH-IT or 1-800-4-KYTC. The Community Trust Bank branch at Isom in Letcher County reopened its lobby and drive through this morning. The bank is the latest business in that area to make a comeback after the flood. The nearby Isom Community Pharmacy opened back up in late August and the Isom Vendors Mall just reopened in early February. One Pike County Safe Space is asking for help to get its people back on their feet. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more about the call to action and how the community is answering it. The West Care Perry Klein Emergency Shelter in Pikeville is on a mission. People will think that this is just a place you come where you can camp out and just hang out and really it's not the truth. Uh, we want to make the homeless population productive again. A mission to get those who are unhoused back on their feet. We try to operate here like we're just all a big family. It's not you're homeless or I'm not or you're different than I am. It's that we're all working together collectively to better their situation. But sometimes making things better starts with a bike. One of the biggest things we have here with getting them back on the workforce is transportation. A new program is underway at the shelter asking the community to help its people pedal forward. When clients begin work, we can assign them one of those bicycles uh, to help them get back and forth to work. I've noticed every time that we've had a donation of bicycles or any way of transport, 
that it's increased the chances of them going to work so much because it's not so hard on getting back and forth. Inviting people to bring in adult bicycles to aid in the wheels to work efforts. And most of the time when you see somebody that's willing to ride a bike or walk to work, you know, they really need the help. But while the bikes get them to work in a more efficient way, organizers say it is the community support that remains the center's strongest driving factor. Homeless people are used to being kind of looked down upon or um, brushed to the side. But when they see you bringing them something here, such as a bike, they think, wow, these people, they do care about me and they do want to see me do better. So that gives them a sense of, okay, I'm going to try because they're helping me try. Using handlebars as a hand up. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. If you're interested in donating a bicycle to the shelter, you can contact Sanders at 606-213-0166. Well, coming up, continuing to watch the possibility for storms, some of which could be strong later this week. I'll break down that latest risk straight ahead. Plus, three generations, six people. How the Smiths are making an impact at the Hazard Fire Department. And a spontaneous revival continues at Asbury University. Why people say there are no signs of the worship ending. WIMT News app offers alerts on breaking stories as they happen, customized to the category.